the In Conversation podcast series with author Nigel Beckles. Welcome to the podcast. Get ready for takeoff. Welcome back to my In Conversation podcast series. In this episode is a lady who raises awareness regarding dyslexia, a brand ambassador and also a radio presenter, Keisha Adair Swaby. Greetings, Keisha. Welcome to my podcast series. How are you? Hi, Nigel. How are you? I'm good today. Yeah, I'm very well, thank you. So what have you been up to recently? Oh, I've been up to a lot. It's been a busy, busy period. Even though we're in lockdown, it's been busy for me. Because at the moment I'm doing a master's and I've just um, relaunched my business again. So, and I've got the children doing a bit of homeschooling as well. So it's been a busy time. It's good to stay busy, especially in these times. Better than being bored. (laughs) Definitely. (laughs) Well, I can hear a little bit of an accent there. So where did you grow up and what was it like? Okay, I grew up in Jamaica and I came to the UK when I was 14. And sort of like in search of a, a better life as our, our family thing, you know, to take us to the UK. So I came to the UK, leaving my family and my parents and everybody's still in Jamaica at the moment. So, yeah, and now I live in Manchester. And how long have you lived in Manchester? Wow, well, I went to school in the Midlands. So I went to school in Darleston for two years after coming from Jamaica at the age of 14. So at 16, I came to Manchester to live and I've been here ever since. And what's it like in Manchester? Oh, Manchester's beautiful. It's a very vibrant city. There's always a lot going on, a lot of people around. There's always something. There's a massive vibes and there's a lot of, um, it's a massive Caribbean community as well, which is great. So yeah, Manchester is one of the most amazing cities. Well, as you spent your early years there, what were your school years like? Uh, well, my school years, you mean in Jamaica or in oh. the UK? So. Oh, well, well, both. In fact, you can explain the contrast. Yeah, well, in Jamaica, it's a bit more, obviously, got the sunshine. So <laughs> it was a lot of fun for us. <laughs> the sunshine, all the fruits that us children used to enjoy when we're going to school. So we used to finish school and then our little, you know, we used to go around getting all the fruits, collecting fruits. So we wouldn't get home until late in the evening. Our parents always knew that we're up to no good <laughs> at some point. And then the school over here is completely different. When I came here, went to school in the Midlands, it was cold and they spoke differently from the way I speak now. And part of that as well, I got, unfortunately, got bullied in school because of my accent and the way that I spoke. So, yeah, it's a massive contrast between the two of them. And do you believe there has been an experience that has changed you fundamentally as a person? Yeah, definitely. Um, when I was growing up in Jamaica, uh, things were a lot different. And then coming to the UK, things was really different. But for me personally, there was struggles and challenges that I was having, which I didn't know what it was at the time. And it was later on, very, very later on in life, I found out what it was. So, yes, there are some quite a few that's really impacted um, my, my life in a way. I understand you have dyslexia how does it affect individuals okay dyslexia is a neurodiverse condition so what it is is i wouldn't uh, a lot of people call it learning difficulties but i refuse to call it learning difficulties i call it learning differences because dyslexic people are very very gifted they're very intellectually highly intellectual and it, it, it affects us. every other every every individual who's dyslexic is affected in different ways Personally, for me, what I noticed about dyslexia was I take longer to do certain things. So, you know, to learn processes, follow instructions, learning things. So I have to take my own time in learning it. So if someone's telling me to do something, it's no point telling me you have to show me how to do it. And other factors as well, um, things like organizing things and the way we learn with colors. There's a lot of things to do with colors as well for our learning styles and our learning differences. Despite your personal challenges, you went to university. Which subjects did you study? Okay, at university, the the first um, degree I did was uh, applied science and exercise and health. And I did that. And when I finished that, I went straight on to starting a master's in health psychology, which is what I'm doing currently at the moment. You're also a radio presenter with Radio Diamond in Manchester. How did that come about? Well, um, growing up in Jamaica, I've always been fascinated with the media, radio in particular, and television. So when I was growing up in Jamaica, my great-granddad that I grew up with and my 
great grandma they had a, uh, this little blue radio but I was so fascinated with the radio I want I just couldn't work my head get my head around how is someone in the radio talking how can <laughs> someone holding this radio <laughs> and this radio is so small but I can hear everything coming through so I was really really obsessed with it I remember getting um shouted at because I broke the radio trying to find out I, I broke the, the actual thing that you used to turn at turn it and you know just fascinated so I always had a dream and I thought one day I want to be doing that I want to be the voice over the radio and it came about when I did some work with I did a project with BBC Radio Manchester and then after that I did I went on the Imani show on Radio Diamond and also Deanne Heron just really encouraged me and said you should be great at doing this you know you should see if we can get a slot to do in the radio and the rest is history. That's 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 the story of doing it. Yeah, that's how it came about. So I want to say that if you've got a dream and you you have a dream from a very early age, just nourish that dream. Don't don't forget about that dream because one day it really can happen. And that's that's it for me. It really happened. What type of topics do you cover on your show? My show is called Lady K Aspire to Inspire Show. So I do a lot of interviews. So it's quite funny that I'm actually being interviewed today on your podcast because. <laughs> I'm always the one doing the interviews. I interview quite a lot of people locally and internationally. And it's about sharing their story, getting their story out there to inspire others of things that challenges that they may, may be going through or things that's happened in the past. They might have just written a book. They might be an artist. So I do try to encourage people to share their story and to inspire others out there. So hence it's called Aspire to Inspire Show. And when does your show go out? It goes out every Sunday from 11 o'clock till 1 o'clock on Radio Diamond. You also spend time raising awareness regarding dyslexia. What made you decide to take that yeah. decision? I decided to do that because I noticed that there was a lot of lack of awareness, especially in the black community. A lot of people still don't know what dyslexia is and they still don't understand the logic of it and how it affects people. So I did something with um, that's Manchester TV back last year and that did a video with them and that would broad, broadcast on the, on the television. So that brought about a lot of awareness as well. So my decision to do that was to just bring it to the people and let them know that it's nothing to be ashamed of. It's nothing to be embarrassed about. More than that, you have got a superpower. You've got, you're very, very gifted and you're highly intellectual as a person. So, you know, just own it. I am proud to say that I'm, proud dyslexic if you look at my information online i always put on there proud dyslexic because i am proud of who i am and i own it so it's all about owning it so keisha what other interests do you have oh what the interests i have i have a massive interest in helping people my mission is always to help others in any way that i can i love connecting people so networking is one of my big interests always networking and also helping people to, with their health as well because obviously I'm studying health psychology and I've just started my business right now which is helping more people to get helping people to get more fruits and vegetables in their daily diet which is a massive thing for me so health is a big interest to me and also other things connecting people and networking and also traveling I love traveling as well and speaking I know you have a Facebook group that focuses on health. So what information is available in your Facebook group and what is it called? Okay, I've got a Facebook group that I've created when I launched Empowering Dyslexic. So I've got a group called Empowering Dyslexic on Facebook and the numbers are growing in there. And the information that I post in there is um, to help people, to motivate them, to inspire them. Because dyslexic need to know that you know, there's nothing for them to worry about. It's okay to be who you are. It's fine, you know, I accept it and own it. So I inspire them every day with a daily quote. Um, you know, and I also put myself and Marcy, I've got a lovely lady in London that helps me to run the group. And she often posts valuable information in there as well. So if there's anything that people want to know about dyslexia, their condition, and also what the signs to look out for in younger children as well, information is there but i want to take it bigger than that so watch the space with that it's coming up and what's on your bucket list keisha oh my bucket list my bucket list i want to um i'd love to travel to australia and also to go to dubai and i've always wanted to do a skydive 
yes <laughs> no look I'm gonna say that to my husband he's like why do you want to do that and I said I just I just want to I just want to he's scared of me doing it but I'm not scared I, I really want to do that yeah so traveling as well is on my bucket list see how it goes see what the future brings and how can people contact you they can contact me very I'm very very active on social media so I have you can contact me on Facebook it's Kisha De Swabian also they can contact me on Instagram and also on LinkedIn as well. Just search from a name, they'll be able to find and connect. Okay, Keisha. Well, look after yourself and thank you very much for your time. Oh, thank you very much, Nigel. It's been a pleasure talking to you today. Thank you for listening. Please join me for another In Conversations podcast very soon for more interesting and entertaining discussions. Stay safe.